It's my pleasure to introduce Roberto Valley. And uh, Roberto selected this base out of our collection, I guess, uh, because he thought it suited his needs. So you could uh, see why he selected this base. And so, Roberto, the first thing you talked about was the ergonomics, the way the base feels and the way it fits. So please talk about it a little bit. Well, I, I find the curve here in the upper bow, you know, extremely attractive and, and how I can go from playing with my thumb behind the neck. Just the transition from here. It's just, it's very, very comfortable. Nice sloped shoulders, you know, um, full, full lower bout for a smaller base. It's, it just feels right when you, I have it in my hands. And um, whether I'm sitting on a stool uh, or I'm standing up, I raise the end pin up and, and all the notes feel like they're, you know, they're in the right place. And yeah. Okay, that's an interesting thing. Yeah. Do some bases feel like the notes are not in the right places? Well, you know, I mean, well, the, I know. It, could be a, it could be a D neck or it could be an E flat neck or the, the, um, the neck is set too far deep in the, in the body where you, it's hard to reach these notes. Um, this, I could just say this bass was very well, well thought out, well planned. And if I could say how I kind of found this bass was um, y you had a client testing it. You right. know, uh, you know, trying it out, and and I asked if I could play it for him, so they he can uh, assess these two bases. I, I remember that and, afternoon. Yeah. Yep. And while I was doing it, I was going from this other uh, other base, whatever. I'm going back and forth, and I'm going, wow, this I really like this thing. So that's how I got uh, that's how I, I got introduced, you know, to the base. I wasn't really shopping around for a hybrid or or, or uh, a, a base that I, that I could use uh, in different st uh, studio or live performances and, and maybe a travel base as well. I just happened to come across and play it. Okay. Yeah. Well, if it, if it feels and good... I had that to have it. I had to have it. <laughs> yeah. So if the bass feels good, I know that's one step in the right direction, but it has to sound good. And yeah. I think that you're primarily a jazz-oriented musician. Yeah. Why don't you talk sound. about the sound and, and show us what you you know what works for you. okay i'll just let the bass speak for itself all right i'm going to just start out all the way at the bottom Wow, that thing snaps. I have never, never really heard that before. <laughs> you know, it's, it's working. It's well, working. It's so, a lot of fun to play. Well, know? that's a good thing to hear. Yeah. What you were just playing, sort of gradually working your way up and across and so forth. Uh, as I said earlier, you're a guy who has bought and sold quite a few bases. Oh, yeah. And is that the kind of thing you do when you're testing the instruments to, to find uh, maybe weak spots mm -hmm. or something oh, yeah, like that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll, I'll check the, how the bass sounds when you're playing the tenth, and just how those notes sing. Just see how the bass. Uh, relates to to itself you know when you're adding two notes like double stops you're playing two notes and just playing playing scales just going up the neck and and just seeing how the bass reacts for, for example if you're going
that's the octave D, and I'm hitting it no problem, you know. Okay. So the notes sound even, up and down, across. Yeah. I guess I feel good about that. I'm glad. Good job, Jerry. <laughs> you, you, did, you did good. You did really well. So and then do me a favor and pick yes. up the bow because yes. uh, I know, I mean, I've heard you test a lot of basses, and uh, the pizzicato is one important test, and the bow is most certainly another. Well, what is it you do when you uh, put the bow on to help you decide if you like a bass? Well, I listen and I feel, you know, I'm listening to the, st to the tone, obviously. But tone, like I was thinking about it, it, it's very subjective. Some people like a dark tone, a bright tone. But when I'm testing out a bass for, for the bowing, is just how, how easy it feels under the bow as far as you know, how, how the notes sing out. And mind you, this bass has spiracore. Uh, they're the Vike, the Vike model. And even with the spiracores, I find the sound to be very, very pleasant and very open very open sounding. You know, there's one characteristic of basses that I find very subtle, and uh, I have theories about it, but no really exact formula, yeah, uh, which is responsiveness to the bow. It just seems like some basses, the strings don't want to get yeah. going. You have to push hard yeah. and work, and other instruments, yeah. it seems like you barely touch the bow, and boom, the sound is there. Yeah, for, for me, what I, what I was taken back with this bass is, is that it, it doesn't have any of that. All the notes really, really work. And I'm really excited to try this bass with a darker string like a flexicore or a bel canto because I think for, for a, a student, a serious you know, younger student or a professional that, that doesn't want to take his prize bass out or whatever, that, that this bass it, uh, could definitely work as a, as a classical solo instrument. And you, you listen to this cello-like sound with this bass here. With spiracores. So back to that afternoon when you were helping uh, another customer try to evaluate this bass. Did yeah. you know it was a travel bass when you first picked it up? I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. No. So I was just concentrating <laughs> on letting the gentleman hear the bass and, and make a decision. And in doing that, I, I, uh, I, I kind of fell in love. Well, I, I know you haven't had a chance to. Uh, I love that smile. I love that smile. I know that you haven't had a chance to uh, take this bass out on a, on, a, on a tour yet, but you're touring. I th when, when are you out of town next? Uh, well, as far as I know, the first time I'm like out of the state, uh, we'll be going up to Seattle for a, a week engagement with Diane Shore at Jazz Alley. Okay. And I'm, I'm definitely uh, I'm, I'm going to bring this bass, put her in the box, and, and get her out. And uh, I probably get this from from opening up the opening up the case and set up ready to play in probably 10 15 minutes and I'm good to go yeah so uh, I guess I'd like to say to the uh, you know you you people listening that this is the Liberty Bell model of bass and this particular one is a flyaway so this neck com neck comes off goes into a box uh, but the same model of bass is available just glued together solid and um, so it could be it could be either way with I think the same tonal characteristics. Roberto, thank you very much for stopping by today. I really appreciate it in the middle of your busy schedule. You took the time to uh, come and uh, 
talk to me and talk to everyone about uh, how the space is working for you. Thanks. Yeah, man, it's a pleasure to talk base with you. And uh, yeah, man, you made a great you made a great base, <laughs> great idea, great design. So this is my baby, the Liberty Bell, in in its box, in its little cocoon, and I'm getting ready to wheel it on out of here. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I gotta go. I got got places, people to meet.